Said he had a 50-50 chance of playing, and we knew at practice today that that wasn't going to happen. And these two teams have been going at it throughout this series, and there's the first hard foul of Game 5. Well, it certainly didn't take long for that first <laughs> hard foul. This is the playoffs. You see, getting the ball underneath Johnson, and then they comes down and fouls him hard, Sean. But you got to do that in the playoff game. Yeah, you man, can't allow him to get the, the easy basket. What, what does Minnesota expect? you got to fight to get through this Denver Nuggets team. This Nuggets team has competed the entire series. They call a flagrant foul. I want to say Steve Javi, Derek Stafford, and Joe Forte are officials tonight. They're three really good ones, and we kind of knew in the first three, four minutes of the ball game that they were going to have to make a statement about how these teams were going to play. I, I understand that, but that was a flagrant foul. That's what they call. So we little, get another look. Yeah, a little, you know, slapping after the play, but a flagrant foul. Lene's a big guy. Johnson hits them both. That's how you make people pay for hard fouls. Irvin Johnson doing a fantastic job. Garnett's going to drive for this one and throw it home. Woo. That was a man dunk. To say the least, are you kidding me? That, that took my breath away. That was absolutely amazing. He just dunked on everybody in the paint, even his own teammates. Very great drive and draws a foul. He got his steps together and brought that ball from St. Paul. Look at this move. Nice little up faking. Oh, my goodness. Straight underarm for Nene. Oh, my goodness. So you got to wipe a little orange off your face. From floor cam, it comes right down on top of you. Jeez. That's like when somebody just puts it in your mouthpiece. John Barry. <laughs> Doesn't get any worse than that. John Barry's at the free throw line. <laughs> Just read about it or heard about it. And there was some trash talk back and forth after the game, including Francisco Elson, who was talking about Kevin Garnett with this quote. It's a cheap shot by a low-class player, low-class type of player. I don't do that. That's gay on his part. I told him he was gay for touching me, my private parts. This is a quote from him. <laughs> I don't care about him. There's going to be retaliation on our part. Now, obviously, that's something that he wanted to take back, at least from the standpoint of he didn't apologize to Kevin Garnett, but when the gay and lesbian community, quite frankly, in uh, the city of Denver and around the country heard about that, they weren't too happy. So he did issue an apology for his statements following the game and the confrontation with Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, meanwhile, said, you know what? I don't know half the guys in their locker room. I could care less what he said. Brad, shut up and give me a kiss. <laughs> you know, I don't want to offend anybody if I do that. The people behind me might get the wrong idea. <laughs> You are a handsome man, though. The wrong idea. I've seen you two things together. <laughs> looks. And a steal. And now it's Derek Martin, coast to coast. Can he win the battle? No. Nope. Oh! It got rejected by Nene. <laughs> and I mean sent way out there. And so was Martin sent out to the first row anyway. Well, they got to take some of this aggressive play that they're showing on the defensive end and transfer it to the offensive end where they go strong to the basket. And that's what the jump shots you see here. Then they saying, no, 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 Minnesota so far right on target. 50-28. And he even posterized a few people in roots. Eight. And here is Garnett being chased by Nene and committing the foul. And I don't know about that because Nene now has two personal fouls. They kind of afford him to get into foul trouble and Garnett shaken up running into photographers and the fans beyond the stanchion. Well, that very well could have been a flagrant foul, too. It wasn't called, but I don't know that Nene made a play on the ball. I think Bennett Salvatore right now is asking Ronnie Garrison if he thought it should have been flagrant. Ronnie said no, but let's take a look. Garnett in the open floor. He's going to go up and dunk this ball. Did he make a play on the ball, I guess? A little bit there. Yeah, that's, that's not flagrant, but... 
these days you often see that call. Now they may obviously enthuse in wanting to make the defensive play, but he risked picking up the second in what would have been, you know, a two-shot situation anyway. And he played an excellent defended by Camby. And Camby going after the ball and nearly a steal. And all of a sudden, Tempers Flair. Not surprising, considering what has been said during the days off and the physical aspect of the last game led by Denver, and it looked like Francisco Elson and Irvin Johnson were the two in the middle, although Garnett was the one who had lost the ball momentarily. Well, I think it was Candy and Johnson who really got into it, and they're the two who are being separated now. You see John McLeod, the assistant coach for Denver now, getting out and trying to restrain Candy. Look at the time, Dick, that after game three, there was a little incident near the bus, near the Minnesota bus, where Francisco Elson and Garnett exchanged words. So there's a little bit of a history here from the previous game, and you can see emotions running high here for both sides. And Irvin Johnson and Carmelo Anthony, double technical fouls are called. And Johnson as well as Garnett. Couple, you know, I'm saying mistakes that I, I got to look at, but other than that, we got to win. So now we're going to go home and close this out. Yeah, because you don't want to come back to this building. Is that fair to say? No, I, I, it doesn't matter. I play on, I play on the streets of, of Brooklyn if I got to. It don't matter. But we're going to close this thing out when we get home. Kevin, thanks for your time and congratulations. Well done. What's up, Ma? Well, D, Minnesota has won three games in a playoff series. Uh, Lips it out of bounds. Cassell is hot. But, and that is why you don't want the big man handling the ball on the break. Rodney White is hurt, and that's not a good sign. Garnett going over to the Denver bench. I don't know what he's talking about. He's yeah. saying something to Andre Miller. Tom Washington told him to get away. It didn't look like a pleasant exchange. It looked like Garnett was annoyed about something. He should be annoyed. His team's down 23. See center is Carmelo Anthony and the Nuggets have bounced back from two road losses to win by 23. Now here's the technical foul. Kevin Garnett trying to knock it away. And then watch Andre Miller pushes him. I know it's a minor thing, but the officials want to make sure it doesn't get carried away right now. Garnett having words, but Miller got the technical foul for the push. Now you'd say, why not give the technical to Garnett? If anything, that would be a delay a game penalty, not really a technical, as they hit the free throw. And these are games like this for officials. Officials love close games. They want a game that's close. It's the, the game. Looking for possibly a spark to some of the stuff that's going on in this series. You look back to game three in the fourth quarter and what appeared to be a pretty minor incident, but Kevin Garnett playing when they're down huge in the fourth, trying to get the ball from Carmelo Anthony and Andre Miller a little push on the superstar and some words exchanged to Garnett tried to say, you know, there's nothing to it. Flip Saunders was saying, you know what? You never know what buttons you push in a situation like that. So tonight they come out and nothing easy. Here's Garnett with a breakaway early on. And then they saying no, no, which is into the photographers. Garnett would be okay. And no, no, I'm a Kenny Wise and that's a flavor. Later no, on, no. mixing it up again, a little scrum down there in the Minnesota end. It's supposed to be Ernie. I know. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. Playoff. Great pride in protecting the paint against the opposition. That is our home. That free throw line is like the front door. You got slot. You got side doors on each side, and that being the free, you know, the blocks, and. We're responsible for all three doors. Just can't. No one has a key other than us. And it's almost like someone kicking that door in, trying to come through, and you having a bat or something else ready to take their head off. That's protecting the paint. Well, that's what's separated this Minnesota Timberwolf team from T Wolf teams of the past. This is an excellent defensive club, and they control. More physical tonight. Use the phrase you told me before we started this. Say it again. About how physical it was out there. Oh, yeah, real physical game, but hey, that's what we anticipate. You know, some things, you know, question, but hey, you got to play through it. Kevin, thanks for your time and congratulations. What's up, Ma? <laughs> and Dick, what he said, it was like a boxing match out there, but we expected that. We knew it was playoff basketball atmosphere. And that was round 1D, and it goes to Minnesota. Leading scores.